This is Block 9, the Liberal Establishment, Section 4, The Rise and Fall of Nixon, with the section of the Watergate Break-In. On June 17, 1972, at the height of the 1972 presidential campaign, five fairly incompetent men were arrested in the Watergate Hotel uh, apartment complex, office building complex in Washington, D.C. Their crime was they were caught trying to plant bugs uh, in the electronic bugs, like listening devices, in the headquarters of the Democratic Party. These five burglars, it soon turned out, were working uh, for a Republican committee with, honestly, the worst acronym name in the history of the world. They were working for an outfit known as the Committee to Re-elect the President, shortened to CREEP. Uh, so these five members of CREEP uh, had broken into Democratic Party headquarters in the Watergate complex and were attempting to kind of plant bugs um, so Nixon could know what they were, what the Democrats were up to. Nixon did not know about the break-in specifically. He did not order the break-in specifically but he, f and this was, this was his crime, he fully participated in, a, in an attempt to cover it up. The press, though, once it got its mouth on this story, would not let it go. Two reporters especially, Bob Woodward and Carl Bernstein, were on Nixon like a dog on a bone, like a fat guy on a pork chop, like white on the proverbial rice. They uncovered and tracked down lead after lead. They talked to witness after witness. And the deeper they dug into the Nixon White House, kind of the more shady the Nixon White House started to look. Um, they discovered um, that the Nixon White House had forged documents to make Democrats look bad. Uh, they found that the Nixon White House uh, used the IRS to harass opponents, that someone who criticized the president next year might find that their taxes were being audited, for example. Um, Nixon had in his own handwriting an enemies list, people that he uh, you know, had to look out for, um, that the Nixon White House had broken to the office of the psychiatrist uh, who is treating the man who leaked the Pentagon Papers. That's coming up uh, in another section of the block. And then Nixon, in order to effectively cover up the tracks of all of these kind of shady deals, ordered the FBI and the CIA to cover them up. Now, wiretapping, bugging, had long long gone on in American history. President Lyndon Johnson did it all the time. But Nixon was a special target. And Nixon was a little sleazier uh, than many other presidents, but not by much. But that times had changed. The American media was not going to any longer help a president cover up indiscretions, especially a president that they hated with the passion uh, that the mainstream American press hated, uh, Richard Nixon. And the newspapers ran with Nixon-related dirt, sludge, mud, every single day. That every day on the front page of the papers, Americans opened up their paper to see um, just how creepy their president was, just how scandal-ridden his administration was, um, all of Nixon's protests that this was nothing new, that all administrations did this, uh, fell on deaf ears. So by the middle of 1973, the President of the United States is already beginning to feel quite a bit of heat from this Watergate break-in and its results.